So we're going to get started. Uh, welcome everybody to LA2M. And uh, my name is Derek. I'm up here with Stacy from Dollarville Printing. And uh, thanks to those of you who came out. I was hoping a startup talk would bring out more people, but I don't know, sometimes I think people like to be told and taught things as opposed to talk about things. So, but today we're going to talk about things. We're going to talk about startups. And uh, this is LA2M. Is there anyone here? Any new people? Brand new? First time LA2M? Yeah, that's the first time LA2M. No new people. Wow, that's, yeah. that's shocking. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks to all you veterans mm -hmm. um, for coming out. LA2M does meet every Wednesday. Actually, we have one more meeting this year, and then we're going to take a summer off. So I guess that's kind of good, kind of sad, kind of bittersweet. Um, so this is the second to last program. And LA2M is a 501c3 nonprofit. So that's the reason Stacy's up here. Stacy's our treasurer. And the way we support ourselves is through sponsorships, and then we pass the hat. So it's free for anyone to come. As you can see, if you want lunch, it's 10 bucks. And um, if you want to contribute, you can throw a few bucks in the hat. That'd be great. If not, it's OK. Just thanks for coming. Um, so let me see. We also have sponsors at LA2M. And this month, we don't have an official sponsor. So uh, that's OK. It's all right. We're going to get lots of sponsors for next year. So uh, keep an eye out. Talk to Mary Lou for either two things. If you know someone that would be a great speaker here, or if you or your company wants to sponsor, talk to Mary Lou. Our first three months, actually, for the next year. OK, yes. The first three months of sponsorships next year are already booked. Um, so this is kind of why we take the summer off. I think in the summer, people have vacation on their minds. And uh, so, and so we, so we take the summer off. But uh, so today is an open forum on startup marketing. It's an open forum on startup marketing, which means um, you are presenting as much as I'm presenting. You know, so I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Why I'm qualified to lead this. Um, I started in GenX Digital Marketing in about seven years ago. So I think I've grown a successful startup. Um, we're up to a team of eight. You know, we're in offices right down the street. We're moving. We're actually moving in a few days. I'm really excited about that. The space right above Arbor Brewing Company, which would be great. So we're moving in a few days above Arbor Brewing Company. And uh, but so that's a startup. We're a digital agency. I've also uh, worked in the past. You know, with Spark on a startup, and I have a new startup going on called Fanalope, which is a sports fan loyalty app that I may talk a little bit about today. We'll see. But, um, but the point is, I've been in this business for a long time as, as a marketer, as a writer, as a uh, strategist. And, but today, I'm not the star. It's, it's more we're going to be going around and hearing from you as well. So Mary Lou actually has the microphone. And um, the way it's going to work is we're just going to talk about startups. Uh, I guess I'm curious, how many of you in the audience are part of the startup or have been part of the startup? OK, good, good, good. Good. So I guess why don't we start? Let's uh, let's just hear from our, Mike. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your startup? And I'm just I'm curious as to some of the startups that we have in the audience and what you guys have done. Just briefly tell us that. Okay. Um, well, I'm Mike Brooks. My company is called. It might have been me. My company is Imports Technologies. Yeah, turn the volume down back here. Can you turn the volume down. Technologies. We're a materials business. We're pretty high, very high tech. It's been out on the machine state. But um, uh, our big challenge was to reach, and I think I think that's what you mean by say a little bit about the business. Uh, our big challenge was to reach out to really major corporations, uh, in the plastic and chemical industry, and introduce a product which, prior to its invention by our professor up at uh, Michigan State, and there was just never been known by man and uh, does not occur naturally, uh, although it's natural materials it's made out of basically sink. So, um, uh, you know, we, we had a lot of, um, we had a lot of challenges in getting started because, uh, you know, we had to figure out who to go to, where to take this business to the market, that sort of thing. So how far do you want me to go with this? Oh, that's plenty far. That's good. That's plenty far. Who else had their hand up? Yeah. Keep 
talk to pages like to talk about that. So I sort of started up a business um, in a way. It's more of an invention, an idea that I have that I've been trying to turn into a product. Um, I started working on it in 2007. So it's been a long process, but I'm, I haven't quit my day job just yet. <laughs> So um, it took us a long time to develop the product, just to get the right parts for the product. And I've over the years found people who I've been able to work with um, very inexpensively. I'm not going for a patent. I'm just going to get a product out there and make some sales and then go on to my next invention. And yeah, what was this invention again? Um, so the product is a, is, a, is a device that makes anesthetizing rodents safer for people. So I work in the um, lab animal medicine at the University of Michigan, and through my work, I found a need for this device. And that's how I came about it. Okay. Who else has their hand up wants to share? Hi, my name is Josh. I um, started a small um, creative collective for Writers originally it was supposed to be for musicians, but they were too fickle. Um, so um, I just had a lot of trouble publishing myself, and even self. I wanted to self-publish myself, and um, I didn't realize how difficult that was going to be. Um, and uh, so I kind of just got together with some other writers that sort of had the same goals in mind, and basically uh, for all of them, writing is a hobby, not a you know, it's not paying their bills. So I was just sort of trying to act um, as an agent and uh, I'm also a business student, so I was trying to take care of the business side of things. And also I've been working with um, a client who has freelance work who um, has a mobile app. It's um, a game similar to Scrabble, but with numbers, where the numbers sum to the last numbers in, in the line. Um, and it's to help kids um, practice addition in a, in a fun way. Yes. Hi. Hi. My name is Mike Brace. Um, I'm a salesman by trade. I run a company called Embrace Marketing. Um, my original concept was uh, I do localized marketing for three communities. So the idea is businesses want to do business to business or business to consumer relationship within three small communities. I'm the guy you need to know within those three communities as to how to get to those people. That was my original concept. I started about three years ago. It's been highly effective. I've been utilizing the Chambers of Commerce as a venue to get in touch with the businesses and create relationships, and it's been highly effective. My tagline is embrace your community as a place to do business, because I think in today's world, we forget there's people right around the corner that want to do that. But, if I may, I did want to come out with an idea, and I'm hoping to run it past the group today. Um, so is going to be my Dana White for a second. So, um, one of the things that I recently got very intrigued with is 3D printing and the idea behind utilizing 3D printing in my thought pattern is you can create a high dollar personalized product that everybody, almost the toy aspect of things that people still want to engage with. My thought pattern would be, I have an example of a thing called Mr. Machine, which is a toy from the 50s. That is a, uh, a machine that uh, you can take apart, put together, that type of situation. And with the 3D parts, what normally you would take, what normally would have taken a uh, mass production, you can do on a one-off basis. You can personalize it. You can uh, gear it towards STEM programs, which is a big issue right now for the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics groups. The idea of just integrating between or interacting between technology and products and somebody actually creating it. This is what the product looks like. And what I'm thinking is that utilizing 3D technology, you can go ahead and um, possibly make a one-off on this type of situation. And also ultimately create quite a bit of margin. Because in my business as a salesperson, you look towards margin. So those are the types of conversations that you look towards doing. So um, also another example, Satish, uh, is, the, is the young man here where you can actually gear towards, you know, the human body doesn't change very much, so you can do the same things, you can personalize it, you can have doctors and 
physical therapists and everybody else get involved with this type of situation. Persons want, people want to do it as gifts. Uh, you can do it as a thing called ASI or PDAI products, which are Chotsky stuff that you get from businesses on a regular basis. I'm looking for somebody that ultimately can take a concept like I'm doing. And I don't want to take this exact concept because obviously somebody else has gone through the process of creating trademarks, branding, and all those other things. But I just look at it and I think there's an opportunity somewhere within the 3D world to do a highly personalized, interactive situation in this case. Um, last thing I want to talk about is I am working with a startup that has created the technology to use landline technology to integrate texting between PC and mobile devices so that uh, the interaction can be more monitored and, and uh, data can be collected utilizing the, um, and utilized. So rather than it going between mobile devices, uh, you can actually utilize it, the power of a PC and the CPU and things like that for that capability. Three things that I'm thinking about today. Thanks, Mike. Satish, do you want to tell us a little bit about your startup? Sure. Um, started a company called Next Services a few years back, um, focused on uh, healthcare services and solutions. Um, uh, up and running and doing well, and uh, primarily focused on the physician and healthcare technology market. Um, but um, sort of going through the same motions again, uh, feeling like it's a new startup because we've shifted gears now, so we're kind of operating like a startup within an existing company now, where we are now taking on sort of more sophisticated uh, technology development within the healthcare space, uh, especially focused on mobile devices. Uh, mobile data collection, mobile analytics, um, uh, real-time diagnosis and things like that. And so um, it's the same startup twice over uh, doing new things, but that's what I do. Thanks. Thank you. So, so it seems like we have some diverse people who have startup experience. Um, and just I think we should establish a basis for, for our discussion today because let's assume that whatever startup we're talking about is viable and great. Meaning, today I don't totally want to talk about whether your startup is viable or not, whether it's worth pursuing or not pursuing, whether it's you know a great idea or not a great idea. Because I think let's let's start from a baseline that the startup is a great idea, and then how do we market that? Okay, because you know as as we know, you know, and, and in doing research to prepare for facilitate this talk. You know, as we know, I mean, your startup better be pretty darn good in order to, to make it work. You know, there was one statistic that, should, that said, so if, if there's other competitors, your startup better be 10 times better than your competition in order to succeed. Because people need a reason to switch. They need a reason to try something new. Um, also, one of the things that obviously fuels the startup is, is passion and the founder and the team. And I think we can, we can talk about that a little bit today, but, uh, you know, I guess I'm curious. You know, assuming your startup is a great idea, and um, how do we start talking about it? How do we market it? Anybody want to? Jim, you got a question? What do you got? I want to back up a little bit. Okay, sure. If, if, if you are open to kind of the open dialogue, sure. I'd be interested, seven years ago, where were you at when you started in Gen X? Where, where is everybody else? It took me 18 months to decide to start my own business, yeah. you know, and I was planning for 18 months. I mean, it took longer than 18 months, but for 18 months I did it before I hung up the open sign. You know, what were you doing and what was everybody doing that helped push you to, to go into a startup? And I think that would be beneficial because there's probably a lot of people who are sitting there going, I would love to do that, but I don't know the steps I need to take to get there. Right, right. Okay, well, let, let me give you just a little bit of experience because I know you're starting up kind of a digital company, right? A digital. So, I mean, when Ingenix started, I mean, it was just me and, uh, you know, I actually got one client. I think it's good to get the first client. And it was somebody who, say, bought a percentage of my time, okay? So I gave them a slightly discounted rate. They bought 15, 20 hours of my time per week to do work for them. There's you get a first client, you get an office. And um, also in that time, I think it's really important to build your presence online, you know? So you get your, your identity, you get your, your profiles on all the different social networks. You start interacting and engaging with people. Um, 
being a part of events, so coming to events, sharing. And really, I think as a new startup, you have a little bit more time on your hands than you do than once you're established. Because these days, after seven years, I'm very, very busy. So it's hard for me to get out as much. Um, so I think laying that groundwork and the foundation. And then, you know, Jim, it was really a, a function of um, working like crazy to get that first client. And then once you get that first client, doing great work for them, which allows you to get the second client. It, it's kind of simple. The dynamics. I, you know, I also believe in the concept of you know, fake until you make it, or act as if. You know, so um, you are what you say you are. If you really believe it, you're passionate about it. You can be anything. So that's a big key. So um, you know, if I if I say I'm something, starting a company, then I need to believe that, act about that, and everything I do, and then people believe it, and uh, eventually it, it becomes true, which I think is possible for anything. Um, does anybody else have any? Uh, personal story they want to talk about of how they um, had success? Okay, uh, I love what you just asked because uh, probably for about 20 years I've been starting up my own company as well as helping raise money to other companies. And the biggest thing that I find, well there's a couple of things that I find to be the biggest things that are happening, but you're specifically asking how do you make that decision? Um, with the uh, with the oil company that we particularly started, we started with the size of a um, salt shaker. That's how big it was, and it went up to 120 feet in the air. And what we did is get a contract and gave no equity, raised a million and a half. Um, you know, ended up raising nine million total for the company. Very interesting, sort of things that happen within that startup. But then when I went on to a internet hotel transaction company, that particular company, they'd already started up, but they needed to raise money. Again, got a contract, um, 5,000 hotels, because it was a hotel transaction company, and um, raised the valuation up to about 800 million. From that, going into another company, which was a breast cancer device company, they had, um, the CEO had raised enough of his own money and gotten a license from NASA for the breast cancer um, company, but they needed to go and raise another uh, 20 million, which we did through various different ways. But um, the decision to go into startups, the biggest thing that I find is that it has to do with your passion and it doesn't matter about anything else. You, the best way I find to get money though, because I've done it quite a bit, is to get a contract first. And just like what you were saying, that helps and hopefully y'all do well. Perfect. Thank you. Well, the time of that contract thing, I mean, the first thing you gotta do is before you get contractors to figure out who you want to consult in, right? And you have to make a list of, okay, if this product is good, and, and I think that you can, you, can just be a, you can just be a concept at this point. You can be written down on paper, but you haven't really taken it to the step of producing it yet. But you have to get on the phone or go face to face and talk to customers. There's a new program that just got started around Ann Arbor. It's at University of Michigan. It's uh, it's funded by the uh, National Science Foundation. It's called i -Corp. Their requirement is you don't even come talk to us until you've talked to 50 potential customers and gotten feedback. Because until you know from a customer standpoint whether you've got a good idea or not, I mean, it's like this mechanical man. Gee, that's cool. Who would you sell that to? I have my clue. He probably doesn't. And maybe he's been out and talked to 50 guys about it already. But if you don't have a good idea of what your customer wants, of a customer wants, any customer wants, I don't think you've got to, you don't really have to have a foundation to start a business. Once you get that point, though, I think the other thing you do is walk in to see Ann Arbor Spark, walk in to see other organizations around here that support Ann Arbor, right? Support uh, entrepreneurs and, and, and start sharing your experiences and sharing and getting other people. Yeah. Right, so that's a really good point, going out and talking to your customers, um, and then also some of these business accelerators like Spark. And sharing your idea is really important, and I can speak from as an inventor, 
when I tell people I have an invention, the first thing they say is, oh, can you tell me what it is? You know, it's like it's some secret, and I can't tell them or they might steal it from me. Um, and then the next question is, well, you can patent it. And the answer is no, because of the money that it takes to patent it. So those are two questions that I get a lot when people ask me. Is, and definitely share your idea. You have to talk to people who can help you. Experience with uh, Spark or any type of organization that helped them get their business off the ground. I just wanted to follow up on her point, okay. and then also, so as a salesperson, I have sold other things in the past. To your point, a buddy of mine created a product for the durable medical equipment companies. Uh, did really well, sold about a half million of this dollar fifty product. You know, it's a very straightforward piece of plastic type opportunity. When you invest in patent, trademarks, comp copyrights, all those different things, you've got to be able to figure out whether your long-term investment, because he recently went through a process of trying to sell his company, and he was so far vested into the company and so far into these, these trademarks and patents and everything else, he couldn't liquidate that company or even sell the product to a secondary product without, without taking a huge loss on all those factors. And it just sort of a, a topping out of the market. So, you know, I've heard this a lot within that particular realm, which I sold for about three years for this guy. And it was a lot of fun doing it, but unfortunately, now he's in a position where he's got to figure himself out in this product. All right. So I, um, I didn't really even think about this until you were talking about uh, you know getting a presence out there on the internet, but um, it didn't occurred to me that I just started doing freelance work and I guess that is a startup in itself. I, I am the startup. Um, but that's exactly what I've been doing is uh, I've been blogging and you know uh, made a Twitter just you know professional and um, just getting an online presence and um, um, you know I just learned invoicing. I had to learn that. But um, I, I have to say I think as far as whether you have a product or a service, whatever, if you have an idea for a startup, just, you know, Nike, just do it. You gotta, you can't sell an idea. You need to show someone that you've done it. And so, you know, if you have a service, get out there prospecting, find customers. If you have a product, you know, make it, find the money, find whatever you need to find, uh, just make the product. And you don't know if it's a viable business until you have something to build a business on. Great. Right. Very, very, very. Nice. All right. So I'm curious. Uh, does anybody want to share an experience they've had with a startup accelerator? Are you guys familiar with that is? So there's uh, there's groups that will help you do your startup. You apply to them. Ann Arbor has a group called Spark, where if you apply to them for funding, they can actually create work for uh, people to help you. So you talked about some of the expenses. You know? So I know they have people there that help you do patents. They, they have people there that help you kind of develop strategy and a business plan. Um, anybody have any positive experience with accelerators or how that's helped them? Yeah. They have, through their program, their students offer, I think it was 50 hours or 100 hours of free labor for you. And so I went as a business owner and made a connection with somebody who was going through that school and he gave me like 50 hours of his time basically gave me ideas and helped me form a better sort of package for my product. Okay. Okay. So what about needing the money to do marketing? You know, so it's like uh, we need users, right? For any startup, we need users, we need people to buy in, we need um, customers, okay? How do you get customers when you're on a small budget? All right, this is, I think, the question that a lot of startups face. How do I get customers, people to um, start using my product? They, you know, I think, um, any, anybody have any ideas on that? How do I start getting people to look into what I'm doing? Steve? Uh, perhaps the cheapest form of uh, what you can do is uh, reach out to everybody you know, honestly. 
that's uh, uh, probably going to be the best way to get your first clients or even because of the, it's sort of the pyramid effect. If you, you contact 20 people, let them know about what you're doing, what you're trying to do, what you're trying to sell. And as long as they're close enough and uh, believe what you're doing, they will talk to another 20 people. And uh, it's important to continue to get the word out. And at the very beginning, when everything is new, you're looking for your first customer, your second customer, it's going to be extremely hard to convince somebody that you've just cold called on. It's uh, because you don't have any history. So, and that's what we did. We tapped into our network of people, both professional and personal, just got the word out. It doesn't happen overnight, but that's where we got our first three customers. And from three, you can go to five, you can go to ten. But they will probably advocate for your business much more than any amount of advertising will do. So that's my suggestion. You know. And, and don't feel shy. That's one of the things a lot of uh, startup, uh, especially owners, feel, you know, hey, I don't want to ask my friends or family, you know, nothing like that, you know. Just, just put it out there. You've already taken the risk of putting your money in a startup, so you might as well risk your friends and family, too. Right, right. Anybody else have any experience they want to share as far as getting a bunch of people to log in and uh, become aware? I really, I really like that point, Satish, of talking to family and friends. And, um, I'm actually working on a startup right now called Fanalope, which is a sports fan loyalty app. And I'm learning a lot as I go. And it's interesting uh, launching a startup when you already have a company because it's kind of a juggling act. And, uh, but the, you know, the point is, is you got to start talking about it. You know, at some point, every idea has, it kind of lives in your head, right? It's maybe in stealth mode. You're not talking about it. And then you need to talk about it. And when you talk about it, you really need to talk about it to everybody. And uh, we haven't, I haven't totally come out of the closet as far as talking about it to everybody, but you have to at some point, right? And, um, and you know, it's like, do I need to keep it secret or do I share it? And I, I think it's important to share it. So that would involve talking to family and friends. It would involve really reaching out to your network because one of the reasons this idea would succeed is because of the strong network I have in relationships. It's like you spend your life building these relationships. When you're ready to launch a startup that you really believe in, you need to really cash in on those. Um, so we're in the process, we're gonna get like some hats and t-shirts made up, start passing those out, uh, setting up meetings with the athletic directors and really getting the ball rolling. Um, you in the back over there, you had some interesting startup experience. Have you, how have you uh, gone about getting getting this money? Is it, you know, have you taken these startups to fruition? I think you were on the West Coast, right? Yeah. Um, any experience you wanna share with that about what was successful as far as getting users, or getting people to, buy into some of your startups? Um, thank you. Yeah. Uh, with the uh, oil company, um, what we did is we went and talked to everybody we knew, relationship-wise. And uh, the biggest thing that we made a mistake about was we went to the president of uh, Schlumberger and to the president of um, Halliburton. And we thought, oh, they'll help us build our prototype. So after spending a lot of money traveling to Texas and doing all that, we said, well, that's not going to work. We're going to have to do this ourselves, and we need something done faster. So um, a lot of what I did, because mostly we were engineers, I mean, I had no idea really what we did from the but um, is I reached out to, it wasn't so much family and friends, but the network of all of, you know, business relationships that I had. And one was a nuclear power plant that did D&D work. And basically what I did with them is I got them to come in just at first to do the, um, the mining uh, of the, because ours was more of a mining operation rather than a down pool thing. But I was actually surprised. They came up with about 800,000, which I was only asking maybe for a couple hundred thousand. Then I went to another fellow who uh, was, um, very much involved with uh, the cleanup of oil spill, like for the Exxon Valdez oil spill. And we brought him, or actually, he came from California to Denver. And the next thing we know, he's you know signing a contract for a million and two. But we had gotten a contract for $75 million for this oil company uh, that was gonna, where we were gonna actually mine for the oil. That's how we raised the first million and a half. But to begin with, we had to mortgage our houses, and we had 
had to do all those credit card advances. Um, I remember sitting on a plane with this fellow who sold his company. Um, I won't mention really any names, but he, we, were, we were on his private plane, and I said to him, Marty, how did you start your business? And he said, over a hamburger shop with my wife's uh, American Express card. And while we were on that particular flight, we were in New York City, and he was offered $523 million for his company. And he stood in the elevator with me going, I can't believe that just happened. So there's the passionate aspect, and it's, you know, it's like you said, you've already decided that you're going to, you know, eat beans and rice. But, you know, I can only encourage people, a lot of times you go to accelerators, and you go to these different places, and you think that that's going to help you, but it helps you get your confidence, maybe. Um, but I would really disagree with necessarily just putting all your, you know, eggs in that particular area. Um, get a get a contract, and, and like with the iCore thing, you don't have to talk to 50 different companies. If one company, you know, gives you a check, you know, you're more in the realm of how much can I take from them? Like, should I take, you know, two thousand dollars, or should I take twenty thousand, or should I take, you know, a million and a half? Depending on, I mean, everybody's averaging different things, but um, if, if that kind of helps, the the other thing that I found was I did go to the government and I got a grant in seven days, and people said that was unheard of, and then I got a grant for a million dollars, um, and they. In the DOE, they said there was no grants or anything available for heavy oil, and I just digged and you know just really continued digging and digging. But I would say that the same thing about um, startup uh, startup is like you said, go to your friends and your family, but also get a get a contract. Or, um, you know, get somebody to give you some money. I mean, that's the best. So, so let's make a distinction here because I think. You know, it's interesting. So starting an oil company, for example, is different than starting a digital marketing company. It's different than starting a mobile app. Um, right? So I think there's different approaches, right? So like um, an oil company, or you may go to Halliburton, or you may go to different established companies, and you need a contract from them. Whereas a lot of people, for example, um, so if you're starting an agency, you need customers, right? Or if you're starting a mobile app, you need users. So then it's figuring out who are those users and how do you get them? Um, and I think one of the most valuable things potentially would be gathering email addresses. Um, you know, th this is something that uh, we work on with people is how do you, you know, like th there's sites out there, even if you have a site, you say our, our app is coming, our product is coming, if you'd like to stay in touch, give us your email address, and gathering and building that mailing list. Um, does anyone else have any acquisition thoughts or ideas about can, someone? Can I just yeah, make go ahead. <laughs> Because it, it all works the same. I really believe that when you're in the marketing, yeah. it really is sales and marketing. Like, you go to the biggest, um, you know, places for the email, you know, maybe go for the bloggers or something like that. Like, we're doing a, we're doing a mobile TV right now, and we're in the startup mode, and it's all about execution and, you know, getting the biggest amount of bang for your buck, but it's still selling that particular person that they should buy, just even give you an email in the first place. So, I, I don't know if that helps, but... Yeah, it's great. Well, um, I don't know anything about million dollar contracts or anything like that, but if you're on um, a shoestring budget, you know, you're... Uh, you don't know if the idea is good enough to mortgage your house yet, or you know, to, to go all in basically. Um, the networking thing, um, I think you can capitalize on that with technology. As far as um, if you take these same people, um, your friends and family and whatever, and you reach out to them in person, but then also you create a Facebook page or social media presence and get them to reach out to their extended networks, if you can get them to advocate for you, you can extend your reach exponentially. Um, and so, and, and that's free. Um, and then if you are looking to spend um, even really minuscule amounts on, um, on advertising, 
Uh, I highly recommend uh, pay-per-click advertising because you can target to the point, it's, it's consent marketing where the people who view your ads are looking for what you're selling if you set it up right. So you can, you know, you can advertise, you can set a budget of $2 a day, um, you can not bid above 30 cents on a keyword, so you, you can do very low cost things and get interest from people who are looking for exactly what you offer. Great, great suggestions. Anyone else have any more marketing tools or ideas for small budget, big, big results? So with my product in the science market, there's, there's journals who will give you a free ad on one journal. So it's one way to get the word out there. And then I've also done, I have a published paper on the device, so I've done research on it and published the paper, so I have that reference. And then um, going to meetings, which are the lab animal meetings where I've gone and presented, and I've also made connections with vendors and have um, was able to get a distributor through those connections. Great, great. Anyone else have an example of something that's worked? In the back. Oh, in the back. All right. Move forward. I had a few thoughts to add here. Um, I recently helped with the appliance repair marketing campaign that generated over 150 leads in the month of April. We, I found that there were a couple of things that I could really help with uh, maximizing the ROI. One of those is call tracking. You know, you really need to be able to track to see not just how many people are coming to a landing page or how many people are coming to your website, but how many people are calling. I know there are some couple of different solutions that can help like with that, like call rail or if by phone. So if you have a service company, that could really be helpful to see in what keywords that they're typing in Google that are um, causing them to call your company. And also, make sure that your website or landing page or wherever you're sending the traffic has a very powerful marketing message because traffic is useless unless you can actually convert those visitors into customers. So that's that's really important. So just my two things. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. So well-designed landing pages that uh, well convert visitors, uh, call tracking, another great idea. I saw someone's hand over here. Yeah, I guess I want to tell a couple of stories. One is um, I had a long uh, career, 40-some um, years uh, with a, a startup that started in 63, so they're celebrating their 50th anniversary this year. But we got spun off from that and then merged and then spun off again. Um, but they started by uh, just doing what they wanted to do. The, there were a couple industrial engineering students and they went to the professor after uh, uh, interviewing for the day with IBM and Procter & Gamble. They said, we really don't want to work for something like that. We want to continue doing the kind of projects we did as students. So the professor says, well, what you do is you set up a company and hire yourselves. And they got their first clients and they bootstrapped. So they didn't need to go out and get funding. They had uh, clients right from the get-go. And then by doing good work, after the first client, they got word of mouth. And then what you do on that is you start to target the influencers among your potential uh, uh, customer community. You know, the ones who are the innovators, the first adopters. You get them to buy into your product and then everybody kind of follows them because they're the leaders. The other story is kind of a, a accident to what, what uh, you were talking about having a good landing page. Uh, there's a story by the founder of GiftSip. GiftSip was a, a site that uh, put uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, gift cards up on a page from everywhere, like from Lowe's and you know, all, all the different uh, consumer uh, stores, and uh, they didn't have authorization to do that. They were doing it on no, almost no budget right out of college. And uh, they're, having, they're having a lot of people visit the site and then follow the link to the store site and buy gift cards. But they couldn't get in the front door of these companies to actually, uh, you know, they're marketing to the companies to try to get some 
you know, feedback, you know, some money from them from all the gift cards that they were selling for them. And they couldn't get in. And then one day they got a, a call from, I think, the, Lo the Lowe's lawyer saying, you're misrepresenting our logo on your landing page. And, and we're going to sue you. And they said, well, you can sue us. We don't have any money. <laughs> uh, but you see what we're doing for you. You know, how many, how many hits are coming through our site to your site? And every gift card you sell, you know, you get 30% profit because people don't redeem all the gift cards. So, so he, the lawyer, got them to the marketing guy in the company. And as soon as he hung up the phone, the guy says to his to his uh, developers, he said, "Find the scuzziest logos for all these." Other <laughs> and within two months, they had all these clients because the lawyers were looking at the logos and saying, "We're going to sue you." <laughs> so that's how they got their big, their big kick. And it, you know, it's kind of a backdoor marketing approach yeah. uh, that he never thought of. So I wanted to share that. That's great. And, and these meetings, uh, you know, uh, I was at Detroit New Tech, uh, Ann Arbor New Tech, we just had the meeting last night. And uh, anybody that's a startup, uh, you need to go to these kind of meetings to see what's out there and get some tips and get networking and all that. We also have GLEQ, uh, which was, did you go to that last yesterday? Night. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that's a, more of a top down statewide organization. Um, where D e New Tech and A2 New Tech are more uh, entrepreneur run uh, local organizations. But if you go to those, you can kind of get in the, get your foot in the door on all these uh, startup ideas, including Burger Right. What are those? GLEQ. Uh, what I was mentioning was D New Tech and A2 New Tech and GLEQ. Um, these are all on the uh, Spark calendar, and uh, for Detroit area, there's a Grow Detroit uh, that keeps a calendar of startup events. In the Ann Arbor area, besides Spark, we have the A2 Geeks uh, as a calendar of, of uh, entrepreneurial events. And then also in Ann Arbor, there's uh, the New Enterprise Forum, which is any meets on the third Thursday, um, which is tomorrow, tomorrow night, uh, of the Holiday Inn. Uh, at five o'clock. Um, so there's a lot of organizations around. I, I just want to make you, you really, Janet, you brought up a really good point that, that if you're in the technical products, um, it's really in there, any product. It's important to go where the people are that use your stuff. Um, you know, where do they congregate? In, in, in the case of products that you're talking about, I'm talking about trade shows, technical conferences, things like that. And we have them be in a place that has. A lot of that sort of thing going on here in Detroit, northern suburbs, Ann Arbor, Lansing, wherever it happens to be. When you find out about something like that, go there. It might cost you $250 to go or something like that. But where else could you, you know, when I talk about 50 customers, where else could you find 50 customers in one place and find them in one day and have the ability to make you know, face to face and, and shake their hand? It also might be in a coffee shop, you know, that there might be. There's places around Ann Arbor and elsewhere where the people with certain kind of ideas and thought processes hang out and find out where those places are and hang out with them. Um, so I, you know, I think that's, I, I, I really, I'm a strong, I'm pretty old school and I, the products I tend to sell tend to be um, the type of things where you, know, you don't have thousands and millions of customers, just if you can have 10 or 20, that's great. Um, uh, which means it's, we're not an internet marketing oriented. We're, uh, you know, it's a people game, and it's meeting, meeting the people that can really influence uh, the business that you're interested in. So I, I really can't. I, I think no matter what you're selling, even if you're just trying to sell a job for yourself, the place to do that is not in front of a computer keyboard, but in front of people who can actually hire you. Great, great. Congrats on that for one more example or case study. Did anybody? Uh, have something interesting on startups that they want to share? Mary Lou. Um, the other thing that I do is I'm executive director of Community Arts Council, which is an arts education organization. And we offer um, classes, camps, and workshops for um, students from age three on up. Our, um, our, we have, we, over the course of the year, we have about 100 children and, and about an equal number of, of adult students that take classes with us. Um, our, our annual operating ex 
expenses are about $60,000 a year. Um, and our income from our classes don't come anywhere close to covering that cost. Because we want to keep the classes affordable. I mean, our objective is to make um, our uh, organization accessible and available and um, also exciting for anyone who's interested in, in taking an interactive um, art experience class. So, um, what, but we're, we're kind of at a point where um, what, what we're, you know, we've, we've done a lot of things with social media, with email marketing, um, we've done some traditional media as well, but we're at that point where, um, you know, we, we have a lot of exciting things ahead of us that are, that are potential things that we could develop that could bring us more funds, more customers, and that kind of thing. But we're, we, we still don't have the, the funds to be able to hire the staff that we need to pull the stuff off. So I guess my question is, I mean, we, we, we've been really, we've been really effective with, with our social media marketing and that sort of thing, but my question is, where do we go from here? I mean, and we've got some grants, but where do we go from here to be able to make that leap to um, to hire staff so we can push forward with some of the other things that we would, that we really would would benefit from from doing. So uh, I guess I welcome some ideas on that topic. Well, you can get sponsors like LA to them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah sponsors. Um, okay, we have, you're going to sign this. Yes, yes, please answer. What I have found, uh, especially for a nonprofit, correct? Yes is um, networking um, and reaching out to people and have them do it on a volunteer basis. Um, students are a great source um, to, to tap into as well. They need that type of experience for their resume to say, I have done that. Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts. Yes, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts. Try, try those avenues. Yeah, great idea. Any other thoughts on that? Churches. Okay. I just had a comment from some things that were mentioned earlier over here, um, kind of the backdoor marketing approach uh, yes. on the cards, uh, and the talk about trade shows reminded me of many years ago when I was selling for a startup. One of the most effective approaches that I took was sort of a combination of those two. So. We weren't at the point where we were necessarily hosting you know, a place at the trade show. We weren't paying the $250 to have a booth. But just the person-to-person -person contact going to a trade show where your best customers would be present. And really, they all want to talk. They all want someone to come to the table. So it's a great opportunity to say, yes, I'm so-and-so. And, and what do you do? And then, and then it's your opportunity to say what you do. And it's a really good way to test the waters and see if this would be a good, um, you know, a, a good prospect and to get some feedback and to just kind of test the waters. So, again, back to our Yeah, great. Attend trade shows, talk to people. Love that idea. All right, so that concludes our, our interactive forum. I want to thank everybody for participating. It wouldn't have been the same without all the smart people in the audience, so thank you. For participating, and uh, let's see. So now we do introductions, which we already heard from a lot of you, but now we're going to hear from all of you. So I do ask that you stand up when you introduce yourself, and uh, you have to speak into this mic because I turned it down pretty low. So it, hopefully it shouldn't give feedback. But um, tell us who you are and your company, and if you're looking for anything in particular, you can do that. And we should be able to get all the way around the room in about 10 minutes. And we're going to start with Miss Laura up here at the front. Derek knows my name because I work for him. <laughs> um, I work at Eugenics Digital Marketing and I head up client accounts. And we are looking to hire a um, WordPress web developer. So if anybody knows anybody um, with those skills, please send them to us. Thanks. And uh, I'm Mary Lou. I'm, I'm also with LA2M. And uh, if you know someone who would uh, be a great speaker for us, uh, let me know about that. Or if you're interested in sponsoring uh, either our summer sponsorship or for the fall, uh, please let me know about that as well. The other thing too is, is anyone here when they leave here driving towards State Street because my car's in a repair shop over there and I need a ride back to the shop. So if someone could let me know about that, that'd be great. 
<laughs> My name is John Matos. I'm an intern in the United of Marketing and one of the live tweeters for today. Hello, I'm Jessica Mara. I'm also an intern in Gen X, and I was the other live tweeter today for the LA2M. And I am a senior at Michigan State, and I'm majoring in advertising management, and I would love to network with you guys. Um, I'm also an intern at Gen X and a live tweeter today. Um, and I'm starting at UVM next week, going into engineering. Hi, I'm Rachel Keaton. I'm a senior advertising major at Michigan State, also an intern at Gen X. Hi, I'm Stephanie Kerr. I'm a senior at the University of Michigan, and I'm studying communications in German. And I'm also an intern at Gen X. Uh, I'm Roger Rail. I'm a venture catalyst. Uh, I do a lot of live streaming, recording of videos for this and some of the tech events I mentioned earlier. Uh, what's coming up? Uh, Nerd Night is tomorrow at Live, uh, where it's kind of like a TED Talk with drinks. Uh, anything else? I think that's about it. I'm Mike Brooks. I'm, I'm with Infor Technologies, we're a spin off company coming out of uh, Michigan State University. We are um, pushing for money right now uh, and customers. Um, and uh, I guess I won't go into all the details about our product. Um, and I'd like to toss out one other thing about looking for money. Uh, these organizations around the state, like the LAQ, last night I was at their uh, big event of the year, and, and I, I don't know how much money they gave away. It was inaccessible thousand dollars I'm sure of that but it was all, mostly in small chunks you know ten thousand fifteen five whatever um, getting involved with those organizations is a, is a great way to do two things it gets you it gives you it gets you into the list to eventually get some funds and some resources to come to you it also uh, gets you organized and you gotta have your stuff together uh, you know if you're gonna get serious about business I think Hi, I'm Lauren Schneider. I also work in Gen X Digital Marketing. I'm a content producer. Hello there. I'm Ashley. I also work in Gen X. Um, I'm a content manager there. And Roger, you stole my thunder, but Nerd Night is tomorrow <laughs> night. And it's going to be sweet. There's brain imaging and I think uh, like neuroreceptors and the plague, I think. So it should be pretty excellent. And then Detroit's is the week after. Um, they're doing superheroes and all the cool things that intelligent, smart people are doing with like superhero stuff, it's pretty neat. Anyway, uh, they've got Twitter, Facebook, etc. If you guys are interested, I'll, I'll let you know more info. Hi, I'm Karen Kearney, the co founder and managing partner of Katie 3 Works. My mission is to revolutionize waiting experience in healthcare. I have a Facebook page, The Waiting Room. I'd love you to go there and like it. It's Wait, W8 T I N G Room on Facebook. And um, looking at revolutionizing the waiting room experience as well as waiting in between appointments. So check out my website at KD3Works. Hi, my name is Jordan. I'm with Jackson Builders and we do everything from designing entire houses all the way down to just small handyman work. But uh, next couple of weeks and last week I'm here to kind of plug uh, something that we do every year. We work with uh, the Dexter Rotary Club and we build a, a replica playhouse for the historic house in Dexter. Uh, this year it's Terry B's, it's a restaurant in Dexter. Uh, it's on display at Bush's um, Friendly Market. Um, you can buy tickets if you want from me or down there. If you're just in trying to win the uh, Playhouse, $5 for a ticket or five tickets for $20. And it's a very large uh, 10 foot by 7 foot replica Playhouse. So if you guys are interested, come see me or if you're in the Dexter area, drive by the market and check it out. It's pretty cool. Hi, I'm Stephanie. I'm the online marketing specialist for online tech. Uh, online tech is a hosting provider. We focus on compliant hosting, so either HIPAA compliance if you're in the healthcare industry, or uh, PCI compliance if you're processing cardholder data. Do we miss someone back there? Sure. No, no. <laughs> She's my support staff. <laughs> My name is Gary Needham. I have a software package that can add up and report across 100 Excel workbooks without any programming, uh, linking formulas or databases. I have about 100 users in 13 countries. Hello, I'm Timothy House, and I'm a 
University graduate from the Eastern Michigan U.S. Uh, Eastern Michigan MBA program. And I'm currently looking for digital marketing career opportunities. So if you know anyone that I could hook up with or get connected with, uh, please let me know. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is William Matos. I'm a business consultant. I help my business to help uh, American people that want to do startups or simply trade in Brazil. Hey, my name is uh, Chris Ponder. I'm currently involved in a couple of startups actually about uh, medical software integration and uh, restructuring bank accounts. So, thank you guys for being involved in that stuff. Hello, I'm Kate O'Hara, and I am working presently in my own startup. <laughs> And um, it's a, a mobile TV, and we um, actually are the founders here in uh, uh, Ann Arbor, which is one of the other reasons I'm back here. So what we're looking for, believe it or not, <laughs> is not money, <laughs> um, although money's good, we like that. Uh, it's actually content. Um, our first um, kind of launch, I guess we could be saying, is fairly soon, over the next couple of weeks, and we've got a wine comedy. So if anybody knows any wineries that have any kind of video, um, we're actually looking at you know uh, being able to showcase it and do like a revenue split with that. Or anybody in the fashion or travel um, area, those are kind of the three areas that we're gonna start um, with our launch. Thanks so much. Hi everybody, I'm Stacy with Dollar Bill. We're your local digital print shop and we can help all you startups get little bits amounts of printing Hi everybody, my name is Jim Musial and I do have a new startup company called 5522 Tech. Uh, I do web and mobile development, uh, helping small companies and entrepreneurs with their, with their digital strategy. I also want to put in a quick plug for Tech Shop. A lot of you guys have talked about it, if you're an inventor or a tinkerer or a dreamer, you might want to check out Tech Shop. I have some flyers here. Uh, I am a member at Tech Shop. It's a really cool place to go if you want to develop an idea. So if you have that idea and just don't even know where to start, this is a great place to check out. So if you want a brochure, please stop and see me. Thanks. Hi, I'm Nancy. And I'm a consultant that works in Jackson with several manufacturers, small business, B2B. And we are currently looking for a content writer for one of our websites. So if you are interested, please let me know. Hi, my name is Josh Conroy. I'm a senior marketing major at Eastern Michigan University. I'm also an honor student and the VP of Marketing and Recruiting for the Entrepreneurship Club there. Uh, I've been running AdWords campaigns for nonprofit organizations for the past year. I just started doing freelance work too. I've been doing that for about a month. Uh, got more time. Um, and uh, I'm looking to pick up some more. Um, so um, if anyone has any work for me, talk to me. Uh, or if you just you know, need some advice or anything, I'd be happy to just sit down and chat. Thank you. Hi, my name is Janet Wilford, and I work full time at the University of Michigan as a laboratory animal specialist. I've been there since 1996, and I provide technical support to researchers who use animals, mostly bison rats. So I can do blood collection, injection, and a variety of surgeries for them. And it was out of that experience that I developed that product. So. And I added, wanted to add one more piece of advice about getting out and talking to people. So I did a fun thing the other day. It was a, a story slam kind of thing, but it was on a computer slam. And it was just, you know, looking for ways to get out and tell your story. And I thought that would be a fun thing to do. And I actually, my story was related to my horse business because I'm also a, a, a trainer for horses. And, uh, but at that event, there were other entrepreneurs and we made some Laura Abramson. I currently work full time at the University of Michigan, the IT department. My background is in marketing and training, and I have a mobile app that's right up there. <laughs> so I'll probably need one of those brochures for Hi, I'm Lisa Rathwick, and I'm a marketing analyst and product manager. Last year, I did something called for a startup, getting them ready for a trade show. 
which they went to and did make some great contacts. And right now I'm really looking for my next opportunity. Hello, <coughs> Mike Grace, again from Embrace Marketing. I want to fully encourage you guys to use your local markets as a place to do business. Um, I did have a question for the girl with the wine idea. Is, that a re is there any regionality to that? I mean, is there anything like you're talking about regional aspect of it? Doesn't, it doesn't have to be. Okay. Gotcha. Very good. Uh, I do have a question. I do have something. Thank you. Uh, it's a beach model I think you guys have an idea of what I do with that. It's a uh, healthcare solution and electronic medical record software company. That's where I spend most of my time. Uh, outside of that, I'm a Ross Business School alum here and quite active with the network. I frequently judge. Uh, startup idea competitions, uh, and also present and talk in business school classes. I'm also an advisor to a growth equity firm. We invest about five to ten million dollars up to twenty in uh, healthcare technology programs. Um, and also take around with little things here and there. Good to go out and learn about it, and uh, so I appreciate all those who have startup experience too who came and shared because that was really the content of this program. So, uh, so let's give everyone a big round of applause. Go out and have some fun and make some money. We'll see you next time. Thank you. So, next week's last meeting, so bring a friend.